Western studies, and maybe uh, somewhere, someday, people start, uh, uh, you know, uh, this uh, trusting the studies to computer. Uh, no, computer. for the clinical trials also, before it goes for the uh, clinical trials, some computational modelings are being done, whether it will work or it will not work on the human models also. I think there is some gap, I mean, the gap is through the trust. Gap is at number of places, otherwise we can get in the two or three days. Gap, gap is, is at every stage. You have the number of structures, otherwise we can have the molecules in the market. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, now, before this, this topic, trust. Trust is very important. That's what Abhid is trying to bring out. So here, before we go for one more round, small one maybe, uh, I want to uh, bring out a few things, like uh, what happened in 1985. See, many banks closed. They closed for two days. They went on strike onto the roads, telling that banks are trying to introduce computers. We want to resist this. We will not allow computers to enter into banks. This will spoil the culture of the banks. And so they went on strike for two days. Today, can you think of any bank working without computers? This is what is called proliferation. Proliferation of the information technology is happening in every corner, in every topic. So within our topic of pharmaceutical sciences, what are all those topics where information technology has entered and trying to do something? What are the other topics where information technology has not entered yet? Where all pharmacy experts are there. Now, proliferation of information technology, computational methods, will certainly will happen. Are there any fields that are left in pharmaceutical, within the domain of pharmaceuticals, where information technology not penetrated? Any of you would like to say something on that? Or is there any more opportunity still pending there? Of course, penetration is one thing, and deeply contributing is another. That has not yet happened. It is going to grow. It will continue to grow. It will certainly take over one day, just like information technology has taken over our entire banking system today. Pharmaceutical sensors will be taken over one day. You are now in between. That is where the word trust is coming into picture. Do we trust at this word, at this moment, there is some lack of trust, no doubt. That is what need to be built. It will be built without any, uh, without any doubt. But what is that uh, still pending? Any of you know or any of you would like to comment on that? No, I just would like to add, uh, just to answer, there is gap. There is gap, there are challenges, there are problems, but I like one thing in the whole, this field of pharmacoinformatics, it makes you to think. There's so much to think. The field itself is known as rational drug design. So the many things, why you are doing this, it makes you to think. So if you think, we can surely bring out something useful. So which is not given to many other students from many other fields. So whatever I have to put it in, note the values. I'll keep on doing it. But uh, in pharmacoinformatics, you take any uh, structures. My professor used to tell us, every day morning you get up and look at your structure. So I, we used to laugh, what is he telling? Who will get up and see the structure? So if you, if you simply re look at your structure, visualize, you will get something. So it makes you to think, so you are, if you are in this line, really you are one of the privileged so we can think rationally, we can do something and we can come out. And there are gaps, always there will be a gap. So that has to be filled up with uh, many other factors. So anyone else? Yeah. The question is related to proliferation of information and computational methods yeah. into the deep, deeper roots of pharmaceutical sciences. Yeah. So uh, I would like to actually uh, 
uh, highlight one uh, genome related uh, uh, publication which came in uh, proceedings of Nat uh, National Academy of Sciences PNS. Uh, so where they actually developed a model that uh, could take in the input of uh, any genome sequence of any human and then actually predict the face of that particular human. So, so like uh, it is really a fantastic kind of research and uh, to specifically uh, uh, like the genome engineering technologies uh, which are now available, the CRISPR-Cas method. So like using the ligand-based docking method, we are trying to solve, uh, 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 we are trying to find a cure to a particular disease but then imagine uh, directly eliminating that disease uh, from the humanity by uh, maybe editing the gene which is responsible for that disease. So uh, these are kind of uh, very exciting areas and uh, uh, maybe to uh, specifically answer the question with respect to clinical trials like uh, uh, maybe uh, the question which you are asking is uh, really uh, the answer to it really lies in maybe ten, uh, five or ten decades in future. So like the amount of computation required to simulate the complete uh, human organism uh, will be tremendous. Like uh, we are currently simulating only a few molecules but if you want to simulate trillions of molecules together and then use that model to test if your drug is going to work or not. So of course this will be possible but it's far, far ahead, probably maybe 50 years ahead maybe or maybe sooner than that, so yeah. The base of the pharmaceutical sciences, how it could be uh, value addition, the pharmacoinformatics, uh, so uh, there is a need of evidence. The evidence uh, on collaboration with the dry lab to computational data to that, the wet lab. By the way, if you develop that the, uh, you know, in silico to in vitro, in vivo, these all the component, it is justified with the data. The preliminary design is that uh, it takes uh, importance. So for a sake of what I can say that the uh, butyrate, uh, the microbiome butyrate, the role in that uh, apolipoprotein and uh, butyrate with liver, butyrate with cognition, so if you have that the clarity of the clarity of the the protein identified how this is the genome the genome are not si very simple component the butyrate it is connected with the genome and how it is connected with the several functions how you if you you could able to make that the data evidence based then naturally there would be a high, you know the basic design of that the computational aspect uh, the assessment, data, uh, data rationalization, it would be a great chance of uh, acceptance. These are all that the pharmaceutical sciences, how the biological based, it, it, it goes into depth that makes it very sensible and rational. A student would like to add. So what Sir was trying to uh, address uh, when he mentioned cognition is that uh, you guys know the Watson-Crick model of DNA. So after their work on the DNA structure, Watson went on to uh, figure out the, uh, the, the codons, what, uh, uh, how protein, protein sequences, uh, nucleotide sequences is converted into protein sequence. But Crick was interested in cognition, how DNA leads to cognition and others, but uh, that dream is yet to be realized. So the full penetration is yet to happen, but uh, so that is one example where uh, it will be ultimately uh, from atomic and molecular level, you want to understand how a human builds and how those same atoms and molecules lead to the consciousness and the things that we do at the organism level, at, at the society and at the whole ecosystem level. But uh, so that is the ultimate goal of the humanity maybe. 
So and uh, but on the uh, and that nobody knows whether it will be reached in 10 years, 20 years, 100, 200 years. So there is no certainty even today. But uh, uh, in the areas where there is some certainty is that if we could look at the molecular dynamics area where uh, in the uh, and only I, I learned about this about reading more about the Nobel Prize of 2014, the history of how that evolved. So in the early 60s, 70s and 80s, the force field were built gradually. In those days, there was a fear that as, this, as you simulate the system for a long time, the system will blow off. And the for, there was no confidence in the force field, how good they are uh, on long, uh, when the uh, simulation time is much larger. But through the co uh, concerted efforts of the uh, experimentalist and coupled with the theoreticians, and the modelers who are developing these softwares, Martin Karplus and the uh, other two Nobel laureate, they, and, and so many large number of people you are using and users of those softwares, so you know the names of the developers of Amber, Gromax, Charm and other tools. So uh, through their concerted effort in the last 20 years, uh, that fear is gone that the force fields are not good enough. They are good enough. But they need to be definitely improved, as Madam said, that polarization needs to be added to that. And as computing power improves, uh, we are penetrating into the larger and the larger systems. 20 years ago, uh, even Brownian dynamic simulations were not that fast. But as they are increasing larger and larger measurable properties, properties that an experimentalist can measure in the lab, they are coming into your domains of prediction. So, not only binding affinity, you can predict now rate constants with increasing accuracy and other. So next, what is the next property that you want to predict? You should go and talk to your uh, pharmacology friends and ask them what is the property that is taking you two months, uh, four months, uh, four years to measure and what can I do about uh, it to predict it faster, either from an empirical approach or from an atomic level approach. Okay. We are Dr. Wade. Yeah, I, you know, I've just reinforced that point, of course, that there has been now confidence gained, for example, in free energy calculations. The big pharma companies are regularly you know, churning their computers to compute small free energy differences between different compounds that might bind uh, to a target. And there's plenty of scope for expanding that to all sorts of different properties. But there's another area I also wanted to mention with regard to this proliferation idea, and that is in natural language processing. <laughs> um, we've lost power? Or, no, you still hear me. Okay. <laughs> um, so with natural language processing, so I think this is, uh, this is something that we're going to just, uh, it's going to be a boom in how we use it, uh, including for um, pharmaceutical uh, problems. Um, if you just think, you know, you can um, write, you know, you can just say, I want a program to do this, and program software will get written, right? And so, you, you, you know, you, how we will write software will change soon, uh, how we generate molecules to go in a binding site. And there's a lot of scope for using um, the ability to process natural language that's really growing very fast. So one point I want to raise. Yes, uh, this brings to uh, one thing that uh, Professor Wade already mentioned. Industries are interested in this. So I have a friend here from industry, Akbar. He, he is currently making money and he is earning a lot of money, you're becoming rich by doing computations in industry, <laughs> pharmacoinformatics in industry. So let us hear from him. So uh, am I supposed to ask questions or? <laughs> <laughs> I would say there are a lot of questions that still need answering. For example, uh, Professor Rebecca just said that we are investing more and more money and efforts doing FEP. And, and I've been following her research and she did a lot of work on estimation of residence times. But 
and, and we know that residence time estimation is, is a very hard field and, and a difficult one because people thought that maybe potency and estimating how, how efficient is the binding was, was enough to develop molecules, but, but we have been realizing that understanding how long a molecule takes to activate and um, the time that it spends in the binding site. So yeah, we, we are lagging. In fact, I, we worked on some of the scripts that Professor Rebecca and her lab has published, tried to modify them and try to use in our internal projects. No luck so far, but yeah. So yeah, there's a lot to explore. And, and on the question that I think Abhit asked about toxicity predictions and so we have a lot of things going on like organ on chip, human on chip methods where we could um, minimize the um, use of animals or use of a lot of things in. So yeah, there's a lot that is going on and there's a lot that can be done. And industry is more into output oriented than academics. Here yeah, you could do more exploratory research, but to wrap up, there's a lot that we depend on in academics. A lot of basic research comes from academics and people give their lives to do research and, and that's where the money comes from. We, we, we do not develop a lot of things from our own. We rely on academics to, to do the fundamental, to do the groundwork for us and then we, we try to build up that and try to develop around it. That's, that's most of today's money making. So I think we are, uh, we are uh, coming out, organizers are sitting there telling that uh, why don't you wrap up. Uh, so, but already two hands raised, I would like to give opportunity. So I was trying to continue the thing like in silico uh, work. So just 10 years ago, we were not able to even predict small things, but now we have big software that we can predict uh, a molecule. Uh, just recently I was reading uh, related to the, uh, I was I'm trying to work and I had a poster on targeted degradation. So that's a new field that has come up and uh, they used both machine learning as well as uh, uh, computational power as well as wet uh, lab and synthesis. They use all the computation power in every step from uh, making a machine learning model to uh, uh, designing a synthetic route to designing a PKPD model and to designing uh, to getting a molecule at the end. So uh, that was done within 45 days. So the whole process was done within 45 days and they could come out with the molecule which was uh, important and which was having uh, good PKPD, PKPD values and uh, was efficiently like in micromolar, con not in micromolar, sorry, nanomolar concentration, it was able to degrade the protein completely from the cell. So uh, there are still gaps, but uh, we are experts and uh, all of you are working in this field. So we are filling up the gaps. We are uh, maybe reducing the um, uh, wet lab people uh, work or uh, maybe eliminating them, but uh, that's what we are going to do. We are going to take uh, all the things and uh, there uh, are some discussions related to in silico clinical trials also. So they are predicting the in silico trial, uh, 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 the trial in computation and using uh, human uh, models. So they are using uh, genomic data. They are obviously the human genome project has uh, been uh, uh, come. So they could not answer so many questions because they did not uh, have the computation power. They did not have the experts. But now they are working into genomics and uh, we are having big machines so that we can understand the whole genome. So through that, uh, we are filling up the gap and sooner or later we will fill the gaps. Thank you. Yeah, one last point. Mr. Well has been drunk already. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, my sincere thanks to all the panelists for sharing your opinion. Uh, before I ask my question, I would like to push back on what my colleague has said. I don't think as computational chemists we will ever be able to replace 
an organic chemist as Dr. Dixit said, a software can predict the best way to get to a particular product but the reaction conditions, the temperature, the catalyst, the pressure, etc. There will always be a place for a person with domain knowledge, that is what I feel. Uh, coming to my question, what I wanted to ask is in an era of increasing computational complexity, whether the field is simulations or whether the field is machine learning, it, it seems that we are moving towards models that are increasing in complexity. Uh, these are referred to as black box models in which we don't know what is happening inside the model but we may get an accurate prediction. What I wanted was the opinion of the panelists on whether you think simple models with a well-defined mechanistic interpretation still have a place in computational chemistry. I think the people are using the term black box very wrongly. When the artificial neural networks were developed, they were given when the random number generation and everything was developed that the, they are the black box and there is no interpretation. With the increase, uh, increasing knowledge in this area, each and every step is explainable by these methods also. So they are not basically the black box anymore. They define the mechanism very well. Then only you are able to implement unless until they cannot, uh, you can just talk about a small data and do the prediction. But if you are applying on a larger data and do, trying to do the predictions, if you see the number of applications where the complete uh, human body can be created by number of parameters, then this is not a black box anymore. So number of mechanics, like the number of basic science has been used in the interpretation of the results also. Yeah, there are money makers, there are software developers, that is their business, right? So they don't want to give anything, just nothing is free, okay? So, but it is up to us to understand and do it. You can also click, keep it as a black box. I am talking about the drug design area. You can just click it, whatever it says, you, you can take it. At the same time, you can ask why it is doing. What I am asking, it is not doing. I want this point to be picked up, the software is not doing. Because they won't let you know. They don't want to let you know. So, but if you think what is happening, so you can, you can, um, you need not follow the black boxes. If at all, either, it is up to you how you are going to explore and learn and then use it for your whatever computational studies you are going to do. Time up. Uh, any last point? One last point I would like to say. All the wet lab experiments, the results you get, what is at the back is the software. Any machine you take, by the hardware, nothing comes out. The software, data, everything is working at the back of that. So even if the wet lab people, they say, we are doing the wet lab, you are at the back of that. They can't do without you. We had, uh, we spent some time, good time, uh, about, um, about more than one hour uh, discussing about the uh, possibilities in the field of pharmacoinformatics. I'm very happy to all the panelists, I thank all the panelists for providing uh, a few clues for the benefit of students. And also I thank all the students for actively participating in the discussion and uh, making it lively. group photo we have to take it. What excellent uh, panel discussions. Good applause for all the panelists. <laughs> Thanks a lot for all the speakers for their wonderful presentations and of course for the panelists for the great scientific interactions. And uh, so we are concluding this session actually today.
and uh, since we have already felicitated the speakers it is our moral duty to felicitate our uh, chairperson for the excellent chairing of this session actually wonderful and i request uh, professor vichandra director kolkata to give a small token of appreciation to our uh, chairpersons also i request uh, director mo kolkata to give a token of appreciation to dr prabhagar yeah. and i also request all the panelists to join for a group photo before we disperse i would like to invite you all for tomorrow's lectures also uh, in fact two speakers whom we invited for this session they told that we are not able to come for uh, 11th of november but we will certainly come for 12th of november they are uh, reaching us and probably they are on their way to come here dr narayan sastri from nish uh, jorhat and dr debashisha mohanty from nii they will be delivering lectures on topics very similar to the discussion happened that happened today so i invite all of you to come and don't miss these lectures on uh, again on pharmacoinformatics but that is kept under pharmacogenomics uh, subheading don't miss them okay before tomorrow program you are requested to join for the today's culture program by 6 o'clock followed by dinner hope you will have a great fun okay thank you and also i have already made a small announcement and i am repeating again you are requested to collect your certificated uh, from that uh, certificate committee desk from the today evening up to tomorrow saturday evening in the convention center lawn and also you can check your uh, poster and oral attendee number from the board placed in the certification committee desk thank you audience for all you are actually